Welcome, welcome, patrons. I know many of you don't actually read any of the codex entries from pr probably any video game you play, but while you may save some time, you do end up missing some interesting little stories that have been playing out for the whole series so far. One of these little stories in Dragon Age is The Adventures of the Black Fox, a name that has popped up in all three games so far and even one of the novels. So who was this man? Well, let's talk about Lord Remy Vaskell. Appearances. Before I go into the story, I want to quickly list out all the things this story has been referenced in. Now, if we want to get technical, there are only three codex entries associated with this story. Adventures of the Black Fox, which was in both Dragon Age Origins and Dragon Age 2, Puzzle Ring and the Fox, which only unlocks in Dragon Age 2 if you buy a ring of the same name from Bonnie Lem's door, which is already pretty hard to find, and finally, the Black Fox's Jerkin, which is only available if you buy the Rogue Item Pack DLC for Dragon Age 2. So out of those, two of the three are based around items. But there are a few more items that are associated with the Black Fox in the series, but don't actually have a codex. Rather, they have a small blurb attached to the item. In Dragon Age Origins, you can find the Fox's bow. In Inquisition, you have the Moon Axe, which references the story as well. In Awakening, Anders comes with a pendant called Fox's Pendant, which by the name suggests that it's somehow connected to the Black Fox, but the small item blurb doesn't seem to have anything to do with the story, so I, I mean, there's really nothing to include there other than maybe it's related. On top of that, there is a reference to the legend in The Masked Empire, which I'll go over more in a bit, and another reference in The World of Thetis Volume 2. So really, the amount of stuff we have on this legend is fairly small, but what is of note is that this is one of the few legends outside of religious-based myths like the Elven Gods and all that, that actually appears across multiple release media. Whatever the truth of the story is, there seems to be some importance to it. I have no idea what that importance is, or if perhaps because, spoiler, this all ends up in the Arlathan Forest, maybe if we end up going there in Dragon Age 4, we can maybe either meet the Black Fox or his corpse. The Story now the bulk of information we have is from the main codex from Dragon Age Origins, which I have already read in my series of audio codex entries, so if you want to listen to the whole story, I've just linked it down below. But for now, let's do a summary smattered with facts taken from the other sources we have on the Black Fox. The Black Fox's real name was Remy Vaskell, a lord born in 863 Blessed. Now for context here, that means that this is actually a fairly new legend, with Remy being about 67 at the start of Dragon Age Origins and 81 at the end of Trespasser, if he's still alive. Remy was a dashing thief and a rogue who was said to use a bow and has so many tales of exploits and adventures it's hard to tell what is truth and what is legend, so keep in mind that a lot of what is said could be false. Anyway, the tales of his adventures became popular with the common folk of Orlé and all around Thetis despite the man himself being from nobility. His first adventure was about making fun of a terrible lord in Val Shavin. Remy would wear a mask and appear to disrupt the lord's plans. This would first be the origins of his nickname, as Lord called him the Cunning Fox, but it also created a bounty on his head, and the man who took the bounty job, named Carolus, ended up being a lifelong partner in crime to Remy after a long series of botched assassination jobs. As the popular tavern tales go, originally Remy was a bit of a fool, and his luck is what causes Carolus to fail. But eventually, Remy proves his cunning, which impresses Carolus so much that he joins him. Now, we know more about Carolus than any of the other companions that Remy had, thanks to the Moon Axe in Dragon Age Inquisition, which tells us that the axe has the inscription Carolus on it. Apparently, the axe was a gift from his dead Antivan wife, who reportedly came from across the Eastern Ocean, while it's no longer with him or his corpse is unknown. Also unknown if perhaps his wife was part of the Executors, but that's a whole nother line of theory that we're not going to go down. Together, the two harass lords and tax collectors for years, and sometime along this line, Remy gains a group of companions. Along with Carolus, there is a wise dwarf named Bullock, a reckless knight called Sir Clementus, and Bastion Dagus Lane? As a quick aside, you might remember that name. You probably remember Bastion as being the lover of Vivian from Dragon Age Inquisition, but he was actually a very powerful man in his own right. He trained as a young man under the Black Fox, eventually returning to a life of nobility after his sister Marissa was killed from what I'm assuming is an illness called the Blue Death. After that, he landed a seat in the Council of Heralds, which is probably the most important position in Orlais. 
While Bastian's settling down as a noble was taken as a sign of repentance in Arlais for his wild youth with the Black Fox, what he learned ended up helping him in his later years. With those who opposed his affair with Vivian, which, side note, his wife approved of the affair, so it wasn't his wife, it was everyone else that just didn't like Vivian because she was a mage, ended up being the target for what seems like a lot of Black Fox-inspired revenge. Anyway, back to Remy. Along with his companions, he gained a lover in Servana de Montfort, which the de Montfort family is actually pretty famous in Orlando in her own right, but I'm not going to go into that. But in some legends, she's also a mage. But yeah, anyway, she's mostly known for betraying him. Remy is then tortured for more than a year, but was rescued by his friends, including a repentant Servana. Together, the group escaped Orlais, and this is where his tale broadens to almost every nation in Thetis. Innkeepers and merchants claim to have seen the man, perhaps in an effort to get more business for their inn or their shop or god knows what. Of the more well-known tales, from here he led the Valshavin lord on a chase through Thetis. He somehow became a figure in politics in Navarra, hunted by the crows, kidnapped a powerful mage into Vinter, did various thefts, murders, and revolutions, and also almost started a kingdom-wide civil war of a nation unknown to us. But no matter the story, it always ends the same. Remy escapes death and somehow improves the life of the common people, returning to his companions at the end of the story. Now, each of his companions also have their own legends as well, with apparently similar themes, but we aren't actually given any of those as the players, but apparently they exist in world. But no matter where you go, no matter what story you hear in Thetis, they all tend to agree on one thing. That the Black Fox and his companions adventured one last time into the heart of the Arlathan Forest, looking for the long-lost city of the elves, Arlathan. But they never returned. There are a number of tales telling what happened in the forest, and many more even think of how the legendary group could be saved. However, in the item description of the Black Fox Jerkin, it mentions that the armor was taken from him in a less than voluntary manner, so I think he's supposed to be dead, but who knows? Now, something that doesn't really fit into this story are the Black Fox's puzzle rings. As the Codex mentions, there were supposedly 10 of these things, and Remy never went without a single one. Except how we have them now when they're not in the Arlathan Forest, I have no idea. Now, what they represented, if anything, is debated. Some say it was reminders of secrets he kept, represented some conquest, or if altogether told the location of his stronghold. But what is important is that many nobles in Valrio claim to have one or more of the rings, although nobody has found them all. If there is a secret, it's still safe to this day. While we can't know who has the real rings and who doesn't, we do have a few people in the series that claims to have some of them. For starters, if we believe in the Codex in Dragon Age 2, Hawk actually has one of the rings, bought from a fence in some sewer. Now, the famous Lady Matillion, who is heavily mentioned in the novel The Masked Empire, and then also the War Table mission in Dragon Age Inquisition, which actually doesn't make sense with the context of the novel, but that's another story and completely, is also said to have handed out these rings to those who impressed her in the grand game. And these rings apparently give the wearer the awareness of the condition, hidden movements, and intended strikes of an opponent. Now, from the novel, it's said that both Empress Selene and Duquesne Bard both own a ring each. So if we believe everything so far, we can at least account for three of the ten rings. Will we ever find the other seven? Will this ever be resolved? Or is this just a fun little legend that really isn't meant to be anything, but just a nice little flavor text? Who knows? And that, dear patrons, is all that I have on the Black Fox. Do you still have any grand questions? Proof that I'm wrong? Tell us about your own fan theory. Feel free to tweet me at Gildrathon on Twitter or send a PM to user Gildanon on Reddit. Duress your all.